Hey, what is up guys? So we're going to be doing a deck profile here for Necroz. Uh, this has been, I think it's been a while now since I last did a deck profile for this, but uh, here's a completely different variant. Last time I did like a 51 card deck. Uh, this time I actually have just the ordinary 40 card deck. Uh, so, you know, obviously it's a little better now. Uh, well, a little bit better in terms of consistency, but that being said, uh, there will be a certain focus around this version, so yeah, definitely just stay to it and uh, we'll see. So to begin, we're playing the Trishla like normal, uh, definitely quite nice here. And uh, we're also playing the two copies of Valkyris. I dropped it down to two because I felt that it was definitely a bit more appropriate in this particular scenario. Obviously, I want to go for a bit more consistency as a result. Uh, I figured... You know, three copies, while it is consistent, it isn't one of the main cards of the deck. It's not one of the main combo pieces. As a result, I didn't want to play too many of them, and playing two was definitely uh, worthwhile enough for me. Gungnir, definitely a really good card as well. I really like the effect of what it does. Might bump it up to two, but not too sure for now. It is definitely a very nice card indeed. Uh, and of course, we're still playing the main search of the deck. We're playing the three copies of Brionic. Uh, you know, still not going to change that. Never going to change it, really. It's just a really good card. Uh, and of course, we're playing the one copy of Unicorn because we're only allowed one. And uh, we're also playing two copies of Clausalus as well to search out for our spells instead. And we're playing the one copy of the Chalice Line because uh, it's definitely a really good choice as well to get you started on your Incantation plays. Which, uh, at this point, I think all Ritual decks will be playing Incantations. It's pretty much mandatory at this point. Uh, but with that being said, that's pretty much it for the uh, Ritual Monsters. So let's move on to the effect monsters. So moving on, we're playing two copies of Great Sorcerer of the Necrons. Uh, this card, essentially, if it's attributed, you can add one of your Unicors or your Valkyries or even your Gungnir. It adds a spell caster. And, you know, similar to Shrit, who adds Clausalus, Trishula, or Brionic, uh, this does the same for the other spell caster line. So honestly, uh, its effect is ultimately not as great as Shrit, but it still is something that will supplement the deck. Uh, of course, we're still playing Ariel and we're still playing the uh, Dance Princess because I think it's definitely really amazing. Of course, we're still playing two copies of Archlord Christia and we're still playing the three copies of uh, Manju. They're still definitely very important cards and I don't think I'll ever be taking them out of the deck. As long as you're playing the Incantation Engine, Christia will always be part of it. Other than that, you guys could always play Vanity's Ruler if you want to. I just find it to be not as good as Christia. Uh, we're playing two copies of Kandor, of course. We're playing two copies of uh, Talismandra. However, in order to make the deck a bit better, uh, we are still playing two copies of Pencil Plume because having a bunch of your ritual monsters in the graveyard makes sense. However, we're only playing one copy of Bookstone. It doesn't come up as often, and I realize that Instead, I'd rather just drop it down to one to improve the overall deck consistency rather than trying to get into it because the thing is this, it's already summonable, it's already searchable and it's the least likely of the incantations that I'll go into. Uh, these guys are the ones that are the main ones. Uh, Bookstone just doesn't do it as much as more. Moving on to spells, we're still playing two copies of Mirror, we're still playing two copies of Kaleidoscope because they are all definitely very key cards. Uh, allowing you to banish from the graveyard, Kaleidoscope, well, there's not much else to explain, it's just insanely good with the Herald of Arclight. Uh, but the cycle I decided to drop to one doesn't come up as often uh, to go from the grave, and even then, uh, it's easily just recurrable from the grave anyway, so it's not a big deal. Uh, either through pre preparation of rites or bookstone, and as a result, kind of makes sense why uh, I would only play this many of them. Uh, which brings me obviously to the preparation of rites, uh, because it adds ritual spells from my graveyard to my hand already. There was no need for me to play bookstone in the actual deck anymore. If anything, I might even drop bookstone because preparation of rites already does the job. But I did want to still have uh, a good variety of the incantation monsters to be able to go into. So as a result, uh, I kept it in. 
of course we're still playing the inception uh generic but still very fine card and of course we're playing the three copies of uh, Caught by the Grave, we just don't want to be hand trapped by the opponent. So as you can see, you can get the feel of the deck now, it's definitely a lot less than usual. Uh, we're not playing the D barriers anymore, we're not playing any hand traps. Uh, the deck is very consistent, this particular version. Um, and it ultimately still maintains that typical playstyle that it always has. You know, it's simply because Necroz, the playstyle just won't change. You're always going to be playing the incantations and try to go for Christia. Meanwhile, the others supplement the deck, being able to do your typical hand trap play with the Necroz cards itself. And uh, so this is pretty much kind of like almost my final build that I'm really happy with and I just don't see myself changing it anymore. Uh, because of how good I've managed to develop it. Uh, it's kind of similar to when I made Dark World, uh, Dark Lords to a really good point that I just felt there was no need for any more changes. It was just so good. And with this particular version, um, like I said, I'm not going to... In the previous deck profile, of course, I didn't do a test hand video. Same thing applies for this. I won't bother doing a test hand video for this. The deck's playstyle will always remain the same. It's just a matter of adjusting it to uh, your liking so that you uh, can, I guess, like the consistency of it. And uh, that's pretty much the whole point of the deck here. So, yeah, there's no test hands for this. It's purely just going to be the exact same thing. I don't want to make uh, the same type of videos. So... There is already test hands for the very first version I did of this deck, so definitely just check that out. And uh, this version uh, is just an improved version to make the deck a lot more consistent than it already is. Alright, so on to the extra deck, we're playing uh, Avramax. Uh, I felt it was easy enough to go into. Uh, plenty of situations where I had two Link Monsters on a board, and... I just wanted to get into it, but I didn't, uh, because I didn't have a copy of it, so now I'm putting it back in. Uh, we're also playing Land for Rinkus, but this is actually meant to be Cross Sheep. I'm still trying to get this card. Uh, it's just really difficult to find, and I'm seriously considering just to buy a box so that I could actually get Cross Sheep. I mean, I still want to get the, uh, the Ignistas. Uh, the Atignistas, I still want to get the Megaliths, so I figure I might as well buy that set. I mean, it's pretty old now, that set. It's came out a while already, but I need the Cross Sheep really badly, so ignore Land for Incas, just consider it as Cross Sheep. Of course, we're still playing the Zulkan, um, pretty much our uh, Kaleidoscope target, so definitely a very important card indeed. Uh, level 11, uh, the level 10 the level 9, the level 8, the level 7, and of course the two level 4 uh, Herald of Arclights. Uh, no point in trying to play three of them, I wanted to add a bit more space to obviously play more Link Monsters because I want this deck to be as diverse as possible, uh, not just focusing on the... Um, ritual monsters in my deck. I want to be able to do more than that. Sometimes I need to go into link plays and I just want to have the option. Uh, with that being said, I'm still playing the Mud Dragon and the Armor Duke. Uh, it's definitely well worth it for the deck. Uh, but that being said, this is pretty much uh, one of my most uh, satisfactory builds I've ever made for Necroz, so definitely very happy about this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this particular version of the deck, definitely uh, leave down in the comments down below. You guys might actually be surprised at how consistent this deck actually has become. Uh, but with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day, I will see you next time.